What's going on, YouTube? Fine, it's your boy Tony Two Times, and we back with another episode of Hood Tales, man. Before I start, be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe if you're new to the fam. Tap that bell. Definitely watch the video to the end because this is a crazy story. Let's get right into it. The drug game is big business all over the world. We hear some people jumping in the game just to make a few extra dollars, or some people jump in the game to go all in, become millionaires or kingpins. It's really just on the individual and what circle of people they get connected with. On this episode of Hood Tales, we will be discussing a man by the name of Maurice Phillips and his role from a New Jersey town to being a multi-million dollar kingpin. Let's take it back to the beginning. Maurice grew up in a middle-class neighborhood in Roselle, New Jersey, near Newark. His father was a public school administrator and his mother a businesswoman. Maurice eventually attended college Splitting his time between the University of Maryland Eastern Shore and King University in Union, New Jersey. Even making the Dean's List and graduated in January 2000 with a business degree in accounting. Being a go-getter by any means, Maurice seemed to be on a fast track to success. But in a turn of events, Maurice took his business mindset and allegedly operated a multi-million dollar drug operation. Maurice was meeting plugs at music parties with celebrities and kingpins, getting product and flooding the streets of North New Jersey, Darby, Delaware, and Maryland. Allegedly getting the bricks of coke from a man in Texas for 16.5 and flipping them to other hustlers for 26.5, making $10,000 profit a brick. The money would stick and come fast. Maurice wasn't like most dope boys though, not really flashy, just like to have fun and play it cool with his money. He would eventually meet a young lady from Philly and things would get crazy. The young lady who we would call CC had a thing for big time dope boys. Allegedly, she started to realize at a young age the benefits of being plugged in and dating cane pants and would eventually be in a relationship with a few. So by the time Maurice met CC, she had already knew the game. The young lady had two kids from previous relationships, but that wasn't a problem. Maurice was getting money and could afford to take care of her and the kids. And then they became serious. CC would introduce Maurice to other trappers in Philly so he could sell more bricks and more money would come in. The two became business partners. CC would allegedly make pickups of money and product, count money in the stash houses, kind of keep the business on track. Maurice built him and his girl a new house in Camden County in a middle class neighborhood. But the hustler had property in Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, and Atlanta, and even had a wife and two other girlfriends. But CC was his partner for other reasons. The two would throw parties with everybody who was somebody. Lobster, $200 champagne bottles, and some fancy places with 60 to 70 people, mostly other hustlers. CC stated that the parties cost anywhere between ten dollars to $20,000, but it wasn't nothing because of the amount of money Maurice was getting. Even telling CC he had $11 million stashed away. Maurice was a big time in the game and even had a motto, MSM, meaning music, sex, millions. Even putting the three letters on cakes at parties. Vacations, luxury cars, homes, women, businesses, and a network of big time trappers. Maurice was plugged in on a different level. Even allegedly one of his homes being robbed $160,000 but later telling one of his homies that wasn't nothing. The robbers missed two million cash in the house. Associates of Maurice alleged he had bags of money in the basement of homes taking a hundred dollar bills to put up and the rest to fund his lifestyle or cop the bricks. CC recalls picking up 50 to 100 bricks at a time but things would get deep. Maurice needed the money to be clean and CC would introduce him to a lady known as Sha, who allegedly claimed money for all the dope boys and was good at what she did, creating fake businesses and making it look legit to keep the feds away, even making fake college diplomas, driver license, and W-2 forms. Sha helped CC and Maurice set up companies, buy properties, cars, and get bank loans. But in May 2002, the feds raided Sha's home and took computers and records. When Maurice heard about the raid, he became paranoid and thought Shaw would cooperate. By this time, CC had a boutique in Atlanta 
with the help of Maurice. When she received a call from her mother, stating shy and her 29-year-old godson had been killed in her home. CC felt as though Maurice had something to do with it, but he wouldn't say anything at the time. Until four years later, telling CC he had to do it. He did it for her so she wouldn't go to prison. Shot CC ended up ending a relationship not long after the feds would swoop in on Maurice, accusing him of making over $30 million, trafficking cocaine for years, murder, and other charges. The ship was sinking. CC and seven associates of Maurice were all indicted. Once CC realized she was facing life, she agreed to cooperate in the trial against Maurice. So did his plug from Texas. Maurice's homeboys all was at court too. The feds seized cars, money, businesses, all from his eight year run. It was over. He received life in prison for the charges that he faced at trial. Stating it was all a setup, he got angry. But the people close to him flipped. Cece said she still loves Maurice, but she had to do what she had to do for her and her kids facing life in prison. She received 12 years in prison. The game was over. More of this story, the deeper you get in the game, the really it gets. You gotta watch the people close to you. So remember, we gotta succeed not to fail. So we won't be just another hood to. Man, it's a crazy story. So yeah, man, so as y'all heard, Maurice had everything going for him, you feel me? He was getting money, but before that, he went to college, he actually had a degree. You know, he could've went any way, but he chose the streets and he chose to go that route and make that fast money. And he got in probably not even thinking he was gonna get to that point, but he ended up being a cane pen, allegedly. A multi-million dollar organization. They saying he made over $30 million. And a lot of people say some of his money, like the 11 million he say he had stashed, they still don't know where it's at. But she say she had to do what she had to do for her kids. You know, she was riding with them. You know, she enjoyed the lifestyle. But when it came time to it, facing life in prison, you feel me? A lot of people ain't gonna take that ride with you. His plug even flipped on. But yeah, man, crazy story. This is another episode of Hood Tales. Y'all already know, be sure to like, comment, share the video. Definitely subscribe if you're new to the fam. You can email me at tony2times.biz at gmail.com. If you got a video request, follow me on IG at underscore tony2times. Love fam, I'm out. Ooh.